And now for something completely different. Smoke medical. We eat every day. The following thoughts on Hoffy Hour represent Brian Hoffy and Pastis. Listener discretion is advised. Live from Tampa Bay. You are tuned in to Hoppy Hour. He's the voice of a generation that got screwed by the baby boomers. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour starts in four, three, two, Hoppy, Hoppy, Hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour with Hoppy. What's up? This is Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy. You can always call the show at 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me, ryanhoppyradio at gmail.com. Now, if this is your first time hearing the show, hi, my name is Ryan Hoppy, and I am the host of this award-winning circus. This is a morning show in a podcasting format. You never know what we might talk about. We might talk about the Kardashians, We might talk about dating apps in 2024. You never know. As I like to say, I am the outspoken millennial. I represent my generation, and I call it like it is. We have so much to get into. I saw this headline right here, and I found this absolutely, positively fascinating. Now... Anybody out there who is saying that Bronny James getting drafted by the Los Angeles Lakers is not nepotism is in utter denial. It's okay if you're a LeBron fan and you think he can do no wrong. I get it. It's okay if you think that LeBron's the greatest ever and blah, 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 da, da, da. But when a fact is shoved in your face, you have to accept it. And that fact is that Bronny James is on the Lakers and was drafted 55th overall because of his dad. There were players that won undrafted that were much better than him. And uh, they won undrafted, and he won drafted because of his dad. He literally almost died last year. And when you have LeBron's podcast co-host, as the coach of the Los Angeles Lakers, all of a sudden it makes you wonder if it's even sports at this point or if it's a reality show. Everyone hated on LeVar Ball five, seven years ago when he was pimping out his family, but frankly, LeBron is doing the exact same. I don't even think that... uh, Bronny wants to play. He just kind of seems like, hey, I'm here making millions. I'm pretty blessed. Now, his son, Bryce, is the one that we need to look out for. So, Dwayne Wade went on um, the Today Show and defended Bronny James. And what he said is nice and all, mm-hmm, but it's a little hypocritical. Let me play the clip, and then I'll explain to you why when you have Dwayne Wade defending Bronny James and you have Rich Paul, the agent of LeBron, defending Bronny James, if Bronny James was so great and so wonderful as a player, he wouldn't need to be defended. His play would do the speaking for itself. Mm-hmm. If he was so like good and so worthy of that position, you wouldn't even need to discuss it. The TV networks could discuss it, but anybody else, you wouldn't even need to. But it makes you wonder. Mm-hmm. No! Happy Hot Topic! All right. Here is Dwayne Wade talking to Craig Melvin from the Today Show. Uh, commenting on this idea that there were guys who were more qualified who did not get drafted. The only reason he got drafted is because he's LeBron James' son. Well, none of them could beat him in basketball. So you can't can't listen to that. Like I said, if you're not there... 
It's already lame. None of them can beat him in basketball. Cool. Just because he's better than the haters doesn't mean he deserves to be in that spot. That's that thing they use all the time whenever a player is critiquing the haters. You can't do what I do. Cool. But we can have an opinion. Mm-hmm. The only reason he got drafted is because he's LeBron James' son. Well, none of them could beat him in basketball. So... You can't. So uh, just because he can beat the haters in basketball means that he should be drafted 55th overall, correct? That's a terrible point. <laughs> Go back to painting your nails pink and shut up. You can't listen to that. Okay. Like I said, if you're not there with me every day, if you're not going through the moments where the, you got to embrace the suck, when you're not going through the moments where you don't want to, you want to quit because it's so hard. Yeah. If you're not in this with me. Yeah. You can't. I can't listen to you comment about me. Okay. And so hopefully Brownie has his headphones on. I know he got his headphone deal. Hopefully he has that on. He's just locked in on a kid who's always had a dream, and that dream probably was to be his dad. And I mean, really. We're just guessing on what his dream is now. He's never said what his dream is. We're just guessing, oh, he wants to be like his dad. Uh, this kid's so screwed. Like, he'll be fine in life, but, man, he is just being forced to not be himself. Mm-hmm. Just locked in on a kid who's always had a dream, and that dream probably was to be his dad and not to be exactly like him on the floor, but to live that dream out that his dad wants one to live, to play the game of basketball at the highest level. And so... He's pretty much admitting that he's doing this because of LeBron. Oh, we all root for him, and, um, you know, we all block out the comments for him. Oops. You're not blocking out the comments because you're talking about the comments right now. It's sort of like whenever Chrissy Teigen responds to haters, uh, and uh, she'll be like, you don't know what I've been through, or I don't care about you, I'm a clap back. If you respond to the haters, all of a sudden... You're giving A, the haters power, and B, you're kind of validating them. I've had my share of haters in life, and I just block them, mute them, or ignore them. I used to respond, and it was small D energy. You got to ignore it. But this whole thing, nobody can beat him at basketball. The dude almost died. He's not in basketball shape. I'm rooting for the best for Bronny, I guess, but it's just hard to root for him. There were players that averaged 14 points in college that won undrafted. And I love whenever um, celebrities go on either the Today Show or Good Morning America. Whenever you do an interview on those shows, it's basically professional ass kissing at its finest. Mm -hmm. You're not getting hard hitting questions from Craig Melvin when you're Dwayne Wade. You're not getting hard-hitting questions whenever you're interviewing Dwayne Wade because players like that want to have the perfect persona, and they want everybody to bow down to them. Just saying. Just being honest. Just being real. 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio. And you can always email me, ryanhoppyradio at gmail.com. All right. We are going to take a quick break. But like I say, I record this show for the hardworking average Joe and Jane that grind in life. I don't care if you're in the Midwest, the East Coast, the West Coast, or if you're in London. You're tuned into my voice right now. And frankly, that's all that matters. We will be right back on Happy Hour after this. Hang on. HoppyRadio.com. Happy Hour will be right back. Happy Hour will be right back. <laughs> the deal I do during each commercial break, I say to myself, I'm about to play a song. 
And I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that if you don't feel like hearing this very song, you can skip forward four minutes. But I choose these songs from the bottom of my heart. They're also unlicensed, so I wouldn't get a copyright strike. If you have any unlicensed music that you want played, email me, ryanhoppyradio at gmail.com. Here is Do It Like My Birthday by Soundmaster T. Do it Sagittarius, birthday November 27. Do it like that until I, I, I end up in money heaven. They be thinking they be flaming and torching them with the bullshit they handing now. So the twist to make the wishing. Blow the candles out. Blow the candles out. Blow the candles out. Sagittarius, birthday November 27. Do it like that until I, I, I end up in money heaven. They be thinking they be flaming and torching them with the bullshit they handing now. So the twist to make the wishing. Blow the candles yeah. out. Pull an all white phantom out. I'ma kill him with the pants and the shirt and the shoes and the hat with the shades and the chain and the watch is the reason I'll be standing now. Where ice and spin that cake while I lick the ice and off the cake. Uh-huh. It's twist the B day, y'all. Come on, everybody, put your promise to the ready with me. Do it like my birthday. Come on. Do it like my birthday. Yeah. Do it. I do it. I do it. I do it like my birthday. All day. I floss like a dentist patient. Just keep testing my patience. Just keep working my nerves. I'm getting spinning that money like the first and the third. Laying on gay skin, blowing cushion the wind, just like. Poppin' no tags, the visas bustin' the sag I'm on with it when I'm gone hard to get a gone man chop Models all around me, so I'm buyin' up the bar I'm a hood star and I'm partin' like a rock star Only at my pick game, meaning you can't upgrade me, mommy I'm the guac green king, like Do it like my, do it like my, do it like my, do it like my, do it I do it, I do it like my birthday Every day, I do it like my birthday Do it, I do it You can take a home on the first day Burger King, mama, you can have it your way Or I can bring another bitch and y'all can do it her way Hotel room, do not disturb way That's how I'ma do it when I do it like my birthday mm-hmm. This following segment has been brought to you by Amir Academy of Martial Arts At Amir academy.com when i tell you that they are the best place in all the bay area i'm a man of my words 
amiracademy.com. This is also being brought to you by Mitra 9. When I tell you, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. let me get the party music going before I talk about Calvin Kratom. When I tell you that they are the best, and I mean best Kratom around, I'm a man of my words. Mitra-9.com and at checkout, use keyword hoppy to save 20%. RyanHoppyRadio.com And now for something completely different. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Oh yeah. 856 49Hoppy 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me, ryanhoppyradio at gmail.com. And as I like to say, I record this show for the hardworking average Joe and Jane that grind in life. All right. So, let's talk about the Hawk Tua girl. We finally know her name. It's Haley Welch. We didn't really know what her name was because there was another name going around. And there were the rumors that she was the daughter of a preacher. And there were rumors that she was a preschool teacher. And I didn't believe those rumors, A, because it was coming from Instagram. And you always have to go to TMZ. People can say whatever the hell they want about TMZ. But TMZ always gets the trashy news first. I mean, they're the ones that announced that Michael Jackson died first. So unless TMZ is reporting it, Another good one is Black Sports Online. It's Robert Little, who's done work for TMZ. Unless it's one of them, if you see it on Instagram, it's probably not true. But at first, I was all about the Hawk Twa girl. It's a kind of a hype video. It's her all drunk and hyper, and there's kind of a little bit of like sensual vibes to it because as like a heterosexual man, you're like, oh, that's pretty cute that she's outspoken about sex like that. But like everything in America... We just kill things right into the ground. We just beat a dead horse. We can have something nice or something that unites us. This is like America's Tiger King of 2024. It's like you have something that's funny, something that's trashy, something that's fun to talk about, and you just beat it into the ground. My God. And no, it's not that I'm jealous or anything, but it's just like, come on now. This is from the Daily Mail. The young woman who shot the fame after a clip of her offering an enthusiastic sex tip went viral, has finally spoken out. Uh, (laughs) Now notice the hawk to a girl. She described her surprise at becoming an overnight sensation, the creepy reaction she's had from men online, and how her parents were unfazed by her sexual advice. Well, yeah. Um, Here's the thing is uh, you always have to be thinking that at any point you're being recorded or that it's going to go somewhere. When you're talking about hot touring, trying to keep this clean for the radio, when you're talking about that openly, you're going to attract creeps. Because when you say, oh, I got to spit on a thing, you're immediately putting explicit thoughts in men's minds. And then men, they get a parasocial relationship with you, look up what that means, where they feel like they know you and they feel like they have a chance. She went on to Plan Bree Uncut podcast. (laughs) Oh, that's such an edgy name. Call her daddy wants their name back. I mean, that's literally the most unoriginal thing I've ever heard. I mean, it's kind of original, but you know what I'm saying. Like, Plan Bree, haha, Plan B. I don't know. It's absolute nonsense. The 21-year-old said fans have offered up to 600 bucks to spit in a jar for them. Yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. 
It literally is the movie Idiocracy come to life. You know what I'm saying? Like in the movie Idiocracy, they talk about um, slang terms and then how the world's getting dumped down and everyone's famous. And I don't even know if it was because Trump got elected or whatnot, but something happened over the last, I would say, five years where everything is just really dumb. I mean, there's something called the Plan Bree podcast. I mean, you could say, well, you do a show called Happy Hour, but uh, here we go. All right. We got the Hawk Tua girl being interviewed by Plan Bree. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Plan Bree Uncut. I have someone that was harder to track down than Osama bin Laden. <laughs> We have the hook to a girl, Haley here. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. This is your first podcast ever, first anything ever. Yes, ma'am. Oh my gosh, how do you- Wrong podcast to go on. Feel, are you nervous? I'm a little nervous. She's a little <laughs> nervous. She was scared coming in, but she wanted to come- A real professional would tell her to talk into the microphone. I'm on a podcast that was with a woman first, so I'm like so grateful it was me and that you chose to come on this one. Yes, ma'am. We have a lot to uh, like get into. Everyone mm -hmm. has been searching for you. I feel like there's been millions of fake accounts that I fell for because I was trying to find you like two weeks oh, ago. Yeah. <laughs> so they're everywhere. And then there was like an account of your merch, but it wasn't, it was like you signing hats. Is that nope. your account? Well, it's not really my account, but the guy that I let do hats for me, he was kind enough to ask if he could sell them. <laughs> so you get this old guy that goes, I don't mind being famous, and maybe I'll get a hot tool out of it. Her voice is exactly what I would expect from a girl that goes, got spit on that thing. Like in my hometown. And so I was okay oh, with okay. it. Okay. He was kind enough to ask, and he's just been great to me. He's He probably wants to get laid. Mm-hmm. Absolutely great. I've known him for years, and he split all what he's made off of it with me, and he's just went out of his way just be good to me. Yeah, so he's been really okay. Good so that's about a good it. guy because I know there's oh, a yeah. lot of people stealing your merch and making money oh, yeah. off of you now. But he's good as gold. Okay. I couldn't ask for better. Amazing. But did you delete all of your social media? Okay, so I deleted all my social media like six months ago due to like personal reasons. I never really got on it or anything. Like ah, you had a bad breakup. That's what happened. <laughs> So then she is out on the prowl. Like that. Oh, okay. But. So it didn't have anything to do with this. Oh no, I was long gone before that. Oh, so <laughs> you were you were already gone from social oh, media, yeah. and everyone thought that oh, you deleted yeah. your social media because you were like scared of all of this blowing up. But you were yeah. gone. I've been gone from it. So like, are, are you going to come back? Purpose. I think we're working on that right now. <laughs> we are. She's talking as if she has a team. I'd be doing that too. Cash that in. <laughs> Here's what I'm wondering. Besides the many things I'm wondering about this girl. In 10 years, is Haley, is Haley Welch going to cringe? I mean, she's 21 years old. I think about the fact that I was on the biggest radio show in Cleveland at age 21, and I was kind of an asshole then. And I kind of wonder, like, if in the year 2033 if she's going to look back on this and go mm -hmm. <laughs> cuz you have a full management team you have a manager now oh, you have yeah. a shooter she comes in with like this big ass camera like she's the real deal <laughs> already this happened like a week ago yes ma'am this is insane okay so i want to i want to know everything about you but i want to go back to the day the night of it all the hook to a video how much coke has this host done <laughs> <laughs> Where were you? What did it happen? Were you on Nashville? Like on I was in Nashville. <laughs> okay. And you were just out drinking, having a good night. Oh, and yeah. you come out. CMA Fest. Right <laughs> after it, I and unheld a big ass snake. And then next <laughs> thing I know, there's a microphone in my face. And I was like, oh, I'm going to conversate with him. But you looked like so natural. Like you weren't scared. You just went right up to it. That's what's so real about it is everyone's trying to like reenact it. But it was just, she's like. I don't know if she hasn't been late in six months. She seems like she's kind of on a dry spell. You know what I'm saying? I could talk to a brick wall if you really let me. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> it's amazing. So you went up and did you think anything was like going to come from it? Was there more of the no. interview? Hey, I think he posted the full video on YouTube this past Sunday, but he only told us he was a YouTuber. He never said anything like about, you know, Instagram, TikTok, nothing mm -hmm. of the sort. So I was like, oh, well, I'm never going to see this again. Sure enough, I seen it again. <laughs> when did you see it again? Like, when did it blow up? So that was Sunday. I seen it about the Tuesday. After that, uh -huh. I should have broke. I seen it like 2 o'clock in the morning when I was getting up ready for work. <laughs> oh, my. 
I will say her voice is a little irritating. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's because I'm from the north. But my goodness, that southern accent. I heard she works at a factory that makes springs. Yeah, bed springs. That was a bad joke. My God, 2 a.m. getting up for oh, work? Oh, yeah. Wait, what were you doing for your job? Well, I have to sit up and get ready for about 30 minutes, and then I'll just go on and go get me something to eat for breakfast, and then I'll go on to work. But I worked in a spring factory. I'm not a school teacher. That was my next question, because everyone bartender. said that you were a teacher and got fired from your job. No, I'm not even old enough to be a teacher. I, was- <laughs> I wouldn't want her teaching my kids, just being honest. I gotta say, because you're 21, I'm like, this is illegal. Who exactly. are you teaching? Exactly. <laughs> so you were yeah. a teacher. Or a bartender. So Either one. Every, and also, I've heard rumors that your dad is a preacher. My father is so far from a preacher. It's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> That's why you're giving out BJ tips to people. <laughs> so everything. Little- Maybe he actually is proud of her then. It's just been made up. Oh, yeah. Like, okay. none of it's true at all. Okay, so this video goes viral. You see it. And when you first see it, is it like millions of views? Like, are you officially the Hawk Tour girl? Or you see it and you're like, maybe this won't be yeah. so big? Yeah. It was massive? It was massive. Okay, we what goes through your head when that happens? I was like, oh, well, this is kind of funny. I was like, it's not going to get any bigger than this. And I go back like an hour later and the views don't went up by like a million. I was like, oh my God, there is no way that just happened. But <laughs> sure enough, it did. <laughs> yeah, and then it kept going and kept going. And then there was the search for you. Yeah. And what like, what did you want to do when there was a search? Was there a part of you that was like, I don't want to be known as the hook to a girl? Yeah, there was a big part of it. And then You said you don't want to be known as the hawk to a girl and then proceed to go around being known as the hawk to a girl. I've all of a sudden lost interest. Mm-hmm. Happy hour. Hawk tour. Happy hour. RyanHoppyRadio.com. Happy Hour will be right back. If you feel like watching that, it's the Plan B podcast. Get it? Because she's on the Plan B pill. <laughs> oh, girls can be so naughty. <sighs> what the hell do I feel like playing? <sighs> I'm in a cranky mood, but like not a bad cranky mood. Just like a get out of my way cranky mood. So I need something to pump me up to get the party going. Here is... Let's see. Chicago by L.E.P. Bogus Boys. We'll be right back. What you know about the middle of the map? Gangsters in the mall black, white socks fitted caps. Posted on the block, 30 shot clip hanging. This ain't a rap trend, shot town, bim bang. Shootouts every night, they complaining that they can't sleep. It's the church and the liquor store all on the same street. Rain, sleep, snow, man. I'm a hustle, cocaine. All sales, final. I'm a product of this dope game. Shot is gap, no aim. Bullets gap, no name. Cluckers dancing in the line like they on so train. We don't care about blue lights. Come take a picture. Still tipping, that's the day of a. Chicago yeah. nigga, this the city of the wind. Yeah. Niggas on the corner tryna win. Chicago nigga, stay hustling the snow. snow. Niggas even hustling the snow. Yeah. You see them blue lights in the air, cameras everywhere. We don't give a fuck, we still tipping. Chicago nigga, where they hustling the snow. snow. Niggas even hustling the snow. Chicago yeah. nigga. Yeah. These cops crooked in Chicago. Daily took them out. Them crown fixing bought them tie hoes in traffic. I don't panic when I see them police lights. I got them pigs in my pockets like Jody White. Hustling that white snow, temperatures ice cold. My workers serving with them cameras on a light pole. Gangster disciples, black stones, DDs. The biggest street gang is the CPD. The sleeves on my triple goose smell like gunpowder. Hawk blowing like a car horn stuck in rush hour. Yeah, the Swiss cheese is driver side. Yo, this how it is, this how we live in Chicago, nigga This the city of the wind Niggas on the corner trying to win Chicago, nigga Stay hustling the snow Niggas even hustling the snow You see them blue lights in the air Cameras everywhere We don't give a fuck, we still tipping Chicago, nigga Where they hustling the snow 
Niggas even hustle in the snow uh, Chicago, yeah, nigga Atlanta, the players in a home to all the gangsters Where you better pick a side if you plan to make it uh, And when you ride through the shy, keep that hat straight yep. Before they find you tied up in that pitch black basement Cameras on the pole, flicking pitches, niggas still pitching Got the block, jalapeno hot, but it's still tipping Slickers flipping on me, trying to plan a itchy on me Cause they ran my government, name and got the history on me You know we gang pain in Chicago Even though the structure done changed in Chicago Uh, that wind blowing in Chicago And when I'm out of town, I let them know I'm from Chicago, nigga This the city of the wind Niggas on the corner trying to win Chicago, nigga Stay hustling in the snow Niggas even hustling in the snow You see them blue lights in the air Cameras everywhere We don't give a fuck, we still tipping Chicago, nigga Where they hustling in the snow Niggas even hustling in the snow Chicago, nigga This following segment has been brought to you by DZBZ Honey at DZBZHoney.com. At checkout, use keyword hoppy, H O P P E, to save 20%. Mm-hmm. I'm a man of my words. I would not lie to you. I always tell the truth on this show. Some radio hosts lie. That's not what I do here. Not at all. I'm always being honest with you. I'm always going to tell you the truth. This is also being brought to you by Fortify.com. F-O-R-T-I-F-E-Y-E.com. And at checkout, use keyword hoppy to save 20%. Mm-hmm. It's time for Hoppy in the morning. Happy hour. Happy hour. <laughs> Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio. And now for something completely different. Stations are tuned in too. 856 49 Hoppy 856 494 6773. You tweeted me at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. Now, I am not a fan of ESPN whatsoever. I think they are corporate. I think they are fake. I think they are smarmy. And this latest thing they did for attention describes why they are so despicable. Mm-hmm. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! Prince Harry is getting an SB. And honestly, this was a brilliant move on ESPN's part. Because without this... Nobody has talked about the ESPYs in years. Have you heard somebody go, oh, yeah, I love watching the ESPYs. So great. So funny. The last time I watched it was like 2010. Mm Mm-hmm. Prince Harry is set to be honored by ESPN at the upcoming ESPY Awards. This year, the Duke of Sussex has been named as the recipient of the Pat Tillman Award for his work with the Invictus Games Foundation. Oh, so he did some work with a foundation while Pat Tillman sacrificed this country and the other people have. Mm-hmm. Ridiculous. Again, it makes a disgrace out of the award. But the decision is being met with backlash from the mother of the man who the award is named after. Pat- she would know. Mm-hmm. 
Pat Tillman's mom, Mary Tillman, has spoken out against the prince receiving the award. She tells Daily Mail, I am shocked as to why they would select such a controversial and divisive individual to receive the award. There are recipients that are far more fitting. There are individuals working in the veteran community that are doing tremendous things to assist veterans. These individuals do not have the money, resources, connections, or privilege that Prince Harry has. I feel that those types of individuals should be recognized. Hell yeah. Now, according to the Tillman Foundation, the award honors an individual with a strong connection to sports who has served others in a way that echoes the legacy of Tillman, who was a former NFL player and U.S. Army Ranger. Pat Tillman was playing for the Cardinals when he decided to quit. Cardinals, not Cardinals to join the army in the year following the 9-11 attacks. He died in Afghanistan in 2004 at 27 years old. While his mother is not directly involved with the foundation that works with ESPN to select the award recipient, Pat's widow is. Marie Tillman Shenton founded the Tillman Foundation and is the chair of the organization. ESPN has responded to the criticism saying... In so the wife is living off of the cloud of Pat Tillman and... Mm, I don't even know if Pat Tillman would love it or hate it, but that pretty much says that the mom and Pat Tillman's wife don't really get along. I mean, it's pretty obvious. In a statement, ESPN, with the support of the Tillman Foundation, is honoring Prince Harry, Duke of Sussex, specifically for the work of the Invictus Games Foundation, as it celebrates its 10th year promoting healing through the power of sport for the world. While we understand not everyone will agree with all honorees selected for any award, the Invictus Games Foundation does incredible work, and ESPN believes this is a cause worth celebrating. Well, yeah, you can celebrate the Invictus Games by having somebody up there that's not Prince Harry. <laughs> but you realize that besides the debate shows where everybody is yelling, I'm Stephen A. Smith. I'm Kendrick Perkins. You have all the yelling on ESPN. Besides that, the ESPN ratings are down. So you could have easily gone with some everyday average Joe Schmo for the Invictus Game Foundation. But no, you went with one of the most famous people ever because you guys are a network of scoundrels. And honestly, when this award was created 20 years ago, that regime and that era of ESPN is so long gone. I mean, did, did you guys see John Anderson's leaving after 25 years on SportsCenter? The day they lose Scott Van Pelt is when it's going to be over. I mean, it's crazy. Like, I'm not trying to sound like old man on the front lawn, but ESPN used to have class and dignity, and now it does not. Breeding. Prince Harry started the Invictus Games Foundation, which held its first international multi-sport event in 2014 for wounded, injured, and sick service men and women, both serving and veterans. The organization aims to help affected armed forces personnel recover through sports. The Prince was in London earlier this year celebrating the Invictus Games 10th anniversary. The S I just have never been a royal family guy. That sounds funny. Like family guy and royal mixed together. No, but I've never been a fan of the royal family. I just don't get it. I get that it's a very boomer thing. Like my mom watched Prince William's wedding and Prince Harry's wedding. And I, I get that it's like a thing. I just don't get it. Maybe because I'm from America and I don't like kissing the ass of the rich and elite. And that is the opposite of what we do here on Happy Hour. I don't kiss in the ass. I don't bow down. I call it like it is. I don't care if you have money or if you're royalty. You're going to die at the end of the day. You're no different than us. I mean, this whole planet's ridiculous. I've said this before, but I really believe at times we need to just blow this planet up. All right, enough of that crappy royal music. Mm-hmm. Putting me in a bad mood. Uh, Travis Kelsey partied with Leonardo DiCaprio and NBA star Tristan Thompson before jetting to Ireland to support and surprise Taylor Swift. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he so cheated during that day.
you are the five people that you hang around. You're telling me that a form they're not a former, but a current NFL player that takes a lot of hits to the head, so you know he has CTE, that when he's partying with Leonardo DiCaprio and Tristan Thompson, who are known cheaters, and Tristan Thompson's a known dog, and Travis Kelsey was a known dog before this relationship with Taylor, you're telling me that he just went to the party, shook a few hands, and didn't hook up with anybody else? He was probably trying to get his rocks off before going on the plane. (laughs) I love bringing up the fact that I think that Travis Kelsey cheats on Taylor Swift all the time because it makes everybody so uncomfortable. Whenever I bring it up, somebody will text me or I'll get messages. People are like, no, he doesn't. He doesn't. I go, Travis Kelsey, allegedly. I don't have any proof. (laughs) You don't just go from being a dog and sleeping with so many women while being in a relationship with that girl Kayla to all of a sudden not sleeping around to all the Swifties out there it's quite scary that you believe that he could just switch and how tiring is it that you have to support her over and over again she needs to make a song about how it's possibly her fault as well but that would her pretty much be ruining her brand because she would have to give men some credit. And, you know, she never would. Mm-hmm. Taylor Swift giving men credit? That ain't going to happen. Happy hour. Happy hour. Ryanhappyradio.com. <sighs> so I've been up. Since 4 a.m., so I'm very tired. So here's the deal. I'm having shorter talking breaks. If you don't feel like listening to the song, you can skip forward four minutes. But I don't want to be pumped up. Mm -hmm. I got to turn off the music here. I got to turn off this royalty music. Any other show would just edit out the breaks. You ever hear a radio show and you go, man, that sounds perfect because it's all edited or it has fake actors here on happy hour it's a celebration i don't know we'll be right back here is ray j and Ludacris with celebration okay sounds good Yeah. 
Mother Nature on the payroll. It stay raining, but Luda keeps signing. Cause me and Shock Zoo went half and bought an island. Chris cut half a million for the watch. Whipping 100 foot yachts up to 55 knots. Ten years been paying my dues, hoes. Get it right, paper long as Penelope Cruz knows. Ten and a half, alligator poops. And Taylor made water repelling cashmere suits. He's so boozy, all in the jacuzzi. Such a Virgo, and that's why he's so choosy. I like her, but I'm digging you too. Y'all can do me like a wishbone and break me in two. <laughs> come one and come all of the time. Cause my bottle service look like an assembly line. Celebrations, <laughs> All right, enough of that. 856 49 Hoppy. Usually I don't like when radio shows burp into the mic, but I just did. Now, if you're looking for the best haircut around, Rich Keeley Master Barbershop in the Bay Area is the place to go to over on Kennedy Boulevard right next door to Salon Loft. Go to richkbarber.com and sign up. And when you go there, tell them I sent you. What everyone else is afraid to say, Ryan Hoppy will say for you. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Happy Hour. Happy Hour. RyanHoppyRadio.com And now for something completely different. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Oh, yeah. 856 49 Hoppy. That's 856 494 6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. You can always email me, Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. We have so much to get into. Mm hmm. I see that Spectrum will be raising its TV, internet, and phone prices by three dollars so when is inflation supposed to end again i know I'm just waiting for my generation i know by saying this opinion i'm gonna really offend boomers but i'm just waiting for my generation to get a break and if i hear one more boomer say well you didn't have to serve in a war we shouldn't have to serve in a war <laughs> ass wipes you didn't serve in a war. You guys got the house the price of a quarter, idiots. 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. Miami has some news. We in Miami. Miami Beach rescinds Sean Diddy Combs Day as lawmaker says woman beaters have no place here. <laughs> Miami Beach Commissioner David David Suarez said, as long as I am a city commissioner of Miami Beach, women beaters, sexual predators, and pedophiles will have no place in our city. Hell yeah, bro. You go, dude. <laughs> now you need to just get rid of all the nightclubs because they are full of them. I'm just saying. You can't just do that for clout. And I do think it's a good idea that it got rescinded. I mean, even before everybody knew that Diddy was a creep, because it was like kind of a known thing that Diddy was a creep, but even before then, what were you supposed to do on National Diddy Day, you know? Listen to average hip-hop and make beats? Because Diddy's not a bad rapper, but he's a placeholder. 
Diddy's like a 6.5 out of 10 in rapping. Like, he made some really good songs, but he was better as a producer. He's kind of like Mace. Like, the rapping skills are like, okay, they're passable, but they're not great. Uh, Golden State Warriors legend Clay Thompson joins the Dallas Mavericks on three-year, $50 million deal, which was very close to the Warriors offering him $22 million a year. And um, I've said in my life before that I am a Golden State Warriors fan, and whenever people say that, they go, Oh, you're a bandwagon jumper. No. That was mostly in high school. That's called trouble. No, I uh, liked the Warriors right when they drafted Curry because I liked them in college. I liked the underdogs in sports. I root with the underdog vibe that people think that the person's not going to accomplish anything. If you would have gone back in time, because I have Gen Z listeners, you were like five years old when Curry was drafted, so you probably don't remember everybody said that he was going to suck, he was too skinny, so then he bulked up. All he did was shoot three-pointers, and then he ended up changing the game. I love that mindset, and I loved what him and Klay Thompson achieved. But Klay Thompson left the Warriors kind of like a bitch. No, he, he deletes it from his social media two weeks ago, anything that was Warriors-related. And then like the Warriors released a statement and said that they're going to retire his number, and thanks for everything, and he just joins the Dallas Mavericks. And the thing that's funny about that is the fact that it really is a matter of fact of who you are drafted by because the fellow warrior Draymond Green was drafted on the Detroit Pistons. He would not have had the same career he would have had. And if Klay Thompson would have been drafted somewhere else, he would not have had the same career. So he should be bowing down and he should be thanking the Warriors. But I've watched a lot of interviews with him, and um, he seems like a nice guy, but he's your typical millennial. Mm -hmm. He's a little uh, sensitive. And you know why I am able to say that? Because I am sensitive. I cannot believe he's 34 years old. I remember when he got drafted in the league. I was in high school, and I just remember, like, the 34-year-old players at that time were like Kobe, and it felt like such a far-out age. You're like, ah, oh, 34. Now I'm about to be 31 in two months. And you know what I'm sick of hearing? If I never hear this again, that's it'll make me so fucking happy. I'm sick of whenever a millennial talks about getting older or Gen Z, and then the Gen Xers and Boomers go, oh, but you're not 50. We're going to be that age at some point, and our 20s just flew by. It's like they don't want to give millennials any credit that they're getting older. Like, we can't even have that. We can't have a good economy. We can't have housing that's affordable. We can't have jobs that pay a lot. Can we at least have getting old, please? Can we? Thanks. Drives me nuts. Oh, you're not old yet. I'm 31. At the age that I was at when my dad was 31, he was cleaning my diaper. Now I'm a 30-year-old single man with two breakups under my belt and a vasectomy. Mm. It's different world out there. People think I'm 24 all the time, and it flatters my ego. I'm like, oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. It used to drive me nuts, but I love looking young. 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. Now, I like what Shannon Sharp does. It's pretty cool. You know, he does the whole thing where he's the unk. He's the guy that's relatable. He's hanging out with us. And you feel like you're hanging out with him even though you're just watching him on screen. And he said some really dirty things about Megan the Stallion. You know, the girl that sings the song, the... Uh, Wop? Uh-huh. Well, she went on his podcast, and uh, he issued a face-to-face -face apology for the sexual comments he previously made about her. Man, it just sounds like Unk's trying to get laid. I often wonder, after a lot of these interviews, if, like, there's a hookup, you know? Like, this, you saw the picture of Shaq and the Hawk Tua girl. Did they hook up? Uh, Rachel Nichols and Jimmy Butler probably hooked up after their interview during the bubble. I wonder what the chances that Megan the Stallion was like, ah, I forgive you for making the sexual comments about me. Now let's have sex. Mm. That's my dirty mind. I always make it dirty. 
There is one thing that is guaranteed on happy hour. It's me being dirty. All right. Here is Shannon Sharp talking to Megan Thee Stallion. Mm-hmm. Meg, before we go any uh, further, I want to apologize to you personally. And I didn't, you know, I always wanted to sit down and have a conversation with you. I didn't know that was going to be possible, possible. But I was always hoping that I got an opportunity to bump into you because I made a comment. I think it was like September, October, and I told a joke and it was I said it in jest. But I believe the joke would have been just as funny had I left you out of it. So for any unwanted attention, harm, shame, embarrassment that I caused you or your family, I want to say as a man, as I sit here before you, I apologize. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> Nor, with every, anytime someone comes on the show, we have to toast because you have an amazing, you, you, you've been amazing and you have an amazing career going forward. So this is my personal cognac, Shea by Laportier. Okay. So Shea by Laportier? That's what it's called, Shea by Laportier. Let me know what you, hey. You know, okay, because you know I'm the cognac queen. <laughs> okay, okay. I don't know if you okay, you, okay, you, you, you knows it? This mm-hmm. is what. Ah, uh, they so hooked up. You saw me. Okay. <laughs> the, hold on. Just, just, okay. She drinks them. I was waiting on it to really like sting me. Ah, uh, uh, it's, it's smooth, ain't it? It's smooth. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was waiting on it to tear me up. No, 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 no. We don't do that. Okay. Well, thank like you. That. You were waiting on it on it to tear you up, and what ended up happening was he teared you up after. <laughs> Lowbrow humor. No! Happy hot topic. All right, this is interesting here. Here are some opinions. Uh, Shannon Crowder talks about Kelly Stafford to Ryan Clark. Mm-hmm. Girl, is struck again. Oh, Kelly Stafford. She have had to apologize to the man whole family. And then she put the joint out like, you guys were the real us and all that. You got to stop your friend. My friend? Well, yeah, so <laughs> you embarrassed me? And apologize to the embarrassment? <laughs> what, what? I just don't know what's going on, man. <laughs> Matt's a good dude. We sat down and talked to Matt Wiz in LA, man. Matt's a good Matt dude. Matt cheated. They need to sit down and have some type of intervention. I don't know if, if Kelly, like the fame of this is something to her or something she's been missing. But, bro, she gonna apologize to Joe? So she's supposed to my apologize to Matt? My husband's... Yes! And then she posts a picture of the whole family. No, what does she have to say to Joe? Joe's not Joe already. Because she put that man out there. It seems like he was with. First of all, I think she was the cheerleader, right? The young lady, the lady that he's married to was the cheerleader. And then she put it out. She was like, y'all were the real us. Y'all were everything that everybody thought me and Matt were. Wooty wooty woo. So now you like, hey, I was acting a fool. Matt was acting a fool. Y'all was the real ones. But since I didn't put y'all business out. And you know, that woman black too. Mm-hmm. So, you know, her homegirls was like, oh, so Joe Cox, huh? So, you know, she was, they cutting up too. She got questions to answer. I see. Kelly ain't want them hands. <laughs> Kelly ain't want them hands from Mrs. Cox. That's what it is. <laughs> Kelly's selfish. At the end of the day, she's very fucking selfish. Mm. Jay, your girl is. Ah, finally, some real opinions about it. You know, Kevin Dillon from Entourage, he played uh, Johnny Drama. His Tesla suddenly stops mid car crash. Yeah. If you drive a Tesla, you're just telling me that you have no confidence in yourself and you're having a midlife crisis and you're overcompensating. Speaking of that, (laughs) Justin Timberlake talked about his DUI or kind of. So, uh... So this is him in Boston in between songs. It's good to see that he's really being accountable for his drunk driving, you fucking asshole. So, uh, is there anyone here tonight that is driving a Glad he's going to be giving a slap on the wrist for that. Mm. You suck, bro. Your new album, the music's okay. Like, it's not bad. But it's so unmemorable. That's what I think has happened probably since 2013 or 14. It's like Justin Timberlake's new music is not memorable. And frankly, you're not that memorable if a 24-year-old cop doesn't know who you are. And I saw TMZ was 
showing clips of the cop. Like, yeah, he's a human being. Mm-hmm. Surprisingly, TMZ is fascinated with a cop. Alec Baldwin calls his second wife, Hilaria, a gift on their 12th wedding anniversary in spite of some tough times for me. Alec, I mean this very nicely. Actually, I'm not being nice when I say this. Alec, you narcissistic piece of shit. Nobody likes you. Yeah, you have fans, but nobody personally likes you. And that's because you're a narcissist. Go fuck yourself. Happy hour. Fuck you. Happy hour. And like that, he's gone. Goodbye. Uh-huh. Happy hour is now over.